Greetings people of YouTube and welcome back to my channel where in this video I am going to be doing something a little bit special. Today I am going to be doing a double review on the Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition War for Cybertron Bumblebee and Barricade. Now if you saw my threats post that I made a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that I've gotten my hands on the War for Cybertron game and I gotta say so far the game is a lot of fun. And because I love the game so much, also because I stumbled upon these guys on a random toy store, I decided to pick them both up. A huge thank you goes to my mom who bought these for me. Thank you mama, I love you. Not gonna lie, I've been slightly pessimistic towards these two figures in particular because I've seen some negative reviews about them, but I won't really know until I judge them for myself, right? Anyways, here's some shots of the packagings from every angle I can think of. And without any further ado, let's crack these things open. And here is the Studio Series Gamer Edition Bumblebee and Barricade out of their packaging. I gotta say, these figures are pretty underwhelming. Unfortunately, just like most people, I do have a lot of problems with these figures. A little more so with Barricade as opposed to Bumblebee, but they're both not the greatest regardless. To find out what my problems are with these figures, let's just jump straight into the... Accessories. As usual, we get a cardboard backdrop accessory with each figure. They look decent, I don't have much to say about them, so let's just throw them off to the side. And now let's talk about the one that came with less accessories, which is Barricade. The only other accessory that Barricade comes with is this Neutron Assault Rifle. As you can see, the sculpting is really good, some nice panel linings here and there, but it is lacking in terms of paint. Integrating this into the figure is the same as it was on the Gamer Edition Optimus Prime, which is to say you just pop his forearm. If you would like, you can plug in this forearm into the backpack of the figure. This also serves as weapon storage for the assault rifle. Anyways, getting back to the arm, you want to attach it just like so. Make sure that this peg here is facing upwards. Yep. Admittably, this does look cool. Unfortunately, this is pretty much the best pose you're gonna get barricade in because the articulation on this figure is... I'll get into that in just a little bit. Now let's talk about Bumblebee's accessories. In total, Bumblebee comes with three accessories which includes the Energon Battle Pistol, the Plasma Cannon, and the Energon Sword. Energon Battle Pistol is pretty cool, though unpainted, but the Plasma Cannon I'm not as big of a fan of. Still no paint. The lack of orange accents in this Plasma Cannon actually made me think it was a, uh, what is this? Thermal Rocket Launcher, that's what I thought it was. The sword is also pretty cool, yet still unpainted. All of these can be integrated into the figure in ways that you would expect. I'll show some pictures right here. As far as storage goes, you can see that in the back there are these two tabs here, and you can tab in whichever weapon you'd like into them. Yeah! Can't plug the forearm in anywhere though. Don't worry, I'll talk about this little number later. The weapons on these figure are also interchangeable, so if you want to put Barricade's weapon on Bumblebee, you can do that, and also vice versa. I gotta say though, I wish Bumblebee had only come with one weapon, preferably the Energon Battle Pistol, and have it being fully painted, as opposed to having three bland as heck weapons with barely any place to put them. While I have some problems with these figures as accessories, it's still pretty good so far. And of course, after talking about the accessories, it only makes sense if we talk about the details. Let's start off with Barricade. Now if we're talking about the design itself, it is probably my favorite Barricade design that I've seen. But the figure just looks a bit too clunky. He's got a lot of mass and is pretty substantial for a deluxe class figure, so I'll give him that. But the silhouette of the figure just looks a little too bulky, a little too clunky, not as streamlined as the character's in-game design. And I mean... Come on, what the heck is this? But honestly, for how messy and how unclean this figure looks, I'm still okay with the aesthetics of it. The admittedly kinda cool looking backpack and yes, even the Thai kibble do make this figure both look and feel quite substantial. But it's the articulation that makes this figure kind of a letdown for me. First off, the head. Incredibly stiff on my copy, I actually had to detach this back. Crap! Pretty much every time I want to move the head around. You can look side to side. Move up and down, kinda. Head sculpt does look pretty neat though. Tabbing this mess back 
in. Shoulders can rotate uh, 360, yeah, that's good. Can move out about this far. Rotation at the elbow. Elbow bends only this far in. At least there's a wrist swivel that can't even move all the way to the side. Waist swivel, probably the best joint this figure has. Hips can move out about this far. Move back about this far until the kibble blocks it. An absolutely pathetic split that isn't even hindered by the thigh kibble. It's just the design of this ball joint right here. What the f Okay, thigh rotation. Pathetic knee. Ankles can move up due to the transformation, but not down at all. And the perfect cherry on top of this beautiful disaster is that there is no ankle pivot. I can think of very few poses that this guy can do, and it is kind of pathetic, honestly. Again, the only thing I really like about this figure is probably the size, which we'll get into after I talk about Bumblebee. As far as how this figure looks, I actually think it looks pretty decent. Far from perfect, I mean, his pot belly is just right out in the open. Don't worry, B. I can relate. And the outside of the calves look pretty darn bland. Overall though, I gotta say that the aesthetics of this figure are pretty serviceable. Again, it's nowhere near perfect, but I could still have some fun looking at it. Plus the back cable is accurate to the game, pretty cool. Gonna be kind of fun taking POV pictures of this guy as if I'm playing the game. So far pretty good, right? Well, once we start talking about the build quality of this figure is when it falls apart in quite a literal sense. The shoulder pads keep popping off. The shoulders, a lot of the times they only pop off during transformation, but it's still pretty annoying. And whatever the heck this is. Basically, almost anything that can pop off on this figure will pop off. But of course, as I'm doing this on camera, nothing will pop up on this figure like I want it to. Trust me, you'll have to feel it for yourself. And popping these shoulder pads back on is a pain. I recommend popping off the shoulder entirely and plug it in just like so. Mm, there you go. It is something that I have gotten used to, but but it's definitely worth mentioning. Fortunately though, unlike Barricade, I can get Bumblebee in some pretty cool poses. Ball joint on the head is really good. Can move up that far, move down about that far, rotate side to side, good head pivot. Again though, that head sculpt is fantastic. Shoulders rotate 360. They can move out about that far. Due to the transformation, you get a butterfly joint that kind of moves back a little bit. Rotation at the elbow. Elbow bends in at 90 degrees. And again, due to the transformation, you can move the wrists inward. Waist rotation. If you detach this belly section, you can get a fake ab crunch going on. There you go. It looks okay. Popping this back in. His legs can move forward that far. It's pretty loose. Can move back that far. Can do the splits. Thigh rotation. Incredibly loose knees that bend more than 90 degrees. And you get a little bit of ankle pivot. Not really. But if you rotate the waist around, rotate both of the thighs around, you can use this transformation joint as a fake ankle pivot. And if you move this foot guard out of the way, you can utilize this hinge joint as a fake toe joint, which helps getting him into some running poses i'll show some images right here and that's pretty much about it as far as the articulation goes you know what this means size comparisons here's bumblebee and barricade next to another cybertronian bot the bumblebee movie wheeljack here's the bumblebee movie rc comparing them to a regular six inch scale figure we have the marvel legends mr knight and finally here they are next to the studio series gamer edition optimus prime even though these two kind of pale in comparison to this Optimus Prime, I still think these three make a pretty cool looking display piece. And now that I am done with their robot modes, let's transform these two figures which will take a while so I'll let my background music play while I'm doing the transformation. So let's get into it and I'll start off with Barricade.
And after two somewhat tedious transformations, not gonna lie, we have Bumblebee and a Barricade in their really cool looking Cybertronian alt modes. Honestly, these alt modes are the best part about their respective figures. I can't really help it, I just love these Cybertronian designs so much. And because I love them so much, why don't we take a closer look at them, starting with Barricade. Transforming Barricade into this alt mode is not really fun, I mean you can even see that I don't even have all the tabs plugged in. Don't even know how I'm gonna get this. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Gotta say that the transformation was pretty much worth it. This vehicle mode looks great. It looks very angular, very square-ish type of design. I think that is what makes this vehicle mode look so wide and bulky. I can absolutely see this alt mode just running through a group of Autobots, demolishing them in the process. These front spikes here might help a lot with that. And this particular time around, I would like to give an extra credit to the back of the vehicle mode may not look too great on camera i mean my camera is not too high quality unfortunately and the paint is also a bit lacking but the sculpting is incredible in my opinion lots of nice indentations sculpted in here to make it look like an actual thruster would have been cool if you could plug in some blast effects here but that's okay in general i feel like this alt mode is the saving grace for this figure not to forget weapon storage is pretty simple you just plug this tab here into this hole yep that looks okay that was Barricade, now let's talk about Bumblebee, which looks great for entirely different reasons. Unlike Barricade, which was a huge murder block, this Bumblebee is pretty cute. It looks very rounded off, quite symmetrical, and is quite fun to play with. It's actually kind of like a mouse. Adorable. Looking from a lot of angles here, it looks pretty cool all the way around. Even has sculpted in butt detail. Nice. As far as the weapon storage goes, there's a little more to talk about here. For the sword, you want to turn this figure upside down. This little slot here is going to be filled in by this little tab here. Yeah. There you go, that looks great, looks like a P. And the guns, they're pretty average. Right, so we got two very cool looking Cybertronian vehicle modes. Now let's do some size comparisons. Here's Bumblebee and Barricade next to Wheeljack, RC, Mr. Knight, and finally Optimus Prime. And that was my review for the Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition number 1 and number 2, Bumblebee and Barricade. This has got to be one of the hardest reviews I've ever made. Crap. Yeah, I mean, it's a double review, so it... Oh, crap! So, unfortunately, I seem to have lost that Neutron Assault Rifle, but whatever. Objectively, these figures aren't that great, and I would only recommend these if you are a fan of the War for Cybertron games or the War for Cybertron character designs. But for the rest of you, I'd say this is an easy pass. I hope you all liked my video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you do. What are your thoughts on my video? What are your thoughts on these particular figures right here? You can let me know in the comments below. With all that being said, I'll see you all next time. Bye bye